ดีครับ Good evening everyone so my name is Kit p a s h a r y a n o n and um, I'm really super excited to be the the moderating session for today so um, the session that we're gonna talk about today is all about the connecting digital payment and platform as you all know that um, the internet economy is growing so Google and Temasek just uh, published the research that our internet economy we grow to 200 billion US in the 2025 uh, in Southeast Asia. And you see that uh, if you look uh, in Thailand, so Thailand, the uh, internet population is growing four times in the past 10 years. Uh, we looking at the data from EDTA, we see that our e-commerce is growing to hit 100 billion US uh, all, all together from B2C, B2B, and also B2G. So I think that is a very, very exciting time yeah, for all of us, not only in Thailand, but the whole Southeast Asia. On the other hand, yeah, not only the development of the internet economy, yeah, we are also seeing the multiple platform that popping up in the past 10 years. So we use Facebook, Line, uh, different platform, and these uh, meaning that 70% of our population are using these platform in the daily life. So I think um, we see a lot of development uh, on, uh, in that. And also, uh, uh, if you're talking about the payment, we see tons of payment uh, the, that popping up in the past few years as well, whether it's Pompeii, QR code. I just went to the temple to do, do e-donation. So now the day we don't need to um, uh, wait in the queue to make the donation and get uh, a receipt any, anymore. So we just scan the QR, and then after that, you get the e-receipt uh, that you don't need to um, uh, submit for tax claim anymore. So that's a very um, interesting progress in terms of the payment. And that all lead to um, the, um, the uh, connecting all the digital platform and also the digital payment together, leading to all the future of commerce that we're going to talk more about today. And definitely today we uh, we got the distinguished panel. Yeah, so I would like to welcome all of them. Please give back hand of applause uh, to our distinguished panelists, starting from the Dr. Uh, Sunny Tan uh, Tai, Group Chief Economist from C Group. Please welcome. Coming up next, uh, uh, Mr. Rungrod uh, Punpon, Chairman of uh, Kasikon Business Technology Group KBTG. Also, Mr. Rathapol, uh, Pak Di Pum, Chairman of Thailand Post. The next one, uh, uh, Jin Wu Lee, uh, CEO of Labit Line Pay. And last but not least, uh, Mr. Chris uh, Bonsimineo, the Head of Innovation and Design, is uh, Visa Asia Pacific. How's everyone today? Very good, right? We just want to warming everyone up <laughs> because this is kind of uh, the last session. Yeah, but uh, all of uh, the things uh, between us, uh, all of us here is you uh, is is dinner, like waiting. So yeah, we want to make this one uh, interactive and exciting as much as possible. So the first thing that I'd like to to ask all the panelists today is that what are the, the, your your strategic direction? regarding the digital commerce and uh, digital platform and uh, what are, are your institution is doing right now yeah, to, to supporting that. Okay, so I, maybe I begin with, uh, with Chris. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, first of all, my name is Chris Bonsamino. I do want to thank the Bank of Thailand for having us here and of course to join our panelists. This is fantastic. Um, I've sat through the presentations today and you've heard three magic words come up over and over and over. So when we talk about digital strategy at the company that I work for, which is Visa, we do this all the time and it's about these three things, this open, interoperable standards. It, has anyone heard this one before today? Yeah, should we say it together? Let's say it, open, interoperable standards. It's critically important. It really, it's how you build. If you work through the theme for this, fair, 
collaborating um, for the future of commerce. It's about building for ecosystems, um, standing up structure for fintechs, um, allowing um, incumbents to play a larger part where it's appropriate. These things all are driven off open interoperable standards. So let me just talk about what I mean, just so we're, we're clear. When I say open, open means that's inspectable, right? It's for use, for comment um, by all parties. You should be able to see it. Interoperable means that it's designed um, to be used cross-border, cross-network, uh, with security and integrity. And standards means it's written down. Like, this is the place you can go to as a fintech um, or any company to see what the standard is. Um, and that's actually important. You know, when you, when you work with a fintech these days, and they come and they say, you know, what are, you, what are we building against? And they say, hey, let me, let me look. Can we take a look at your APIs or what standards? Um, if you can't sort of answer with flipping open your laptop, you know, the laptops gets closed and the meetings end. So these are important to have open interoperable standards um, drafted in that fashion. Um, for Visa, you know, we've been building and expanding a network for a number of decades. And that's just simply the way that um, we've operated. Um, today, and this will come up over again, um, when it's done well, globally, um, you can have a reach of, you know, we have 54 million merchants. On the other side of it, there's 3.2 billion cards out there that can connect the two. In between are 15,000 financial institutions. And if you've ever tried to integrate with one financial institution, it's hard. The only way to do it 15,000 times are with open interoperable standards. So I think it's gonna come up over and over, but it's the basis of the strategy for growth. That's very interesting. How about how about you, Jin Vuli? Hello. Um, I I'm a humble employee working for Line Thailand, and as of now, I'm in charge of Rev Line Pay, and uh, this is my second year to join this event, and. Basically, uh, this is Line Messenger, and in this room, um, if you are Kon Thai, Thai user, then uh, I guess most of you guys already are using Thai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fan club. Yeah. <laughs> Came from Citibank. Yeah. So my job, uh, everybody, uh, almost everyone in Thailand is already using Line Messenger and everybody already has smartphone. So when I first came to Thailand eight years ago, it was not like this. So I think the highway, uh, I would consider, compare the smartphone more like a highway. And we have line messenger, more like a car. And my job is to put the gasoline into the car. Or it could be electricity, uh, electronic car. But um, I think it's not even halfway done yet. So I guess last year, very few of you guys um, were using Revline Pay, but this year, hopefully, more users uh, we were able to get. And next year, we could get, hopefully, we could get much more users to use payment through Line Messenger. So it's all about the convenience, and we need to bridge more business partner and the user uh, through the Line platform. And how many like a line pay user right now? So as of now, we have six million registered users, but uh, in total, forty-three million line messenger users in Thailand. So still, I have a long way to go. Wow, that's very interesting. How about uh, Mr. Ratapol and Thai Post? Yeah, what is the um, the, um, the strategy that you, that you think they're gonna helping the social commerce? Yeah, um, thank you. I may have to apologize. Uh, if I sound the least digital on this panel. Um, Thailand Post will turn to its uh, 126th year next month. We pretty much an um, analog company and, and still is. Um, our slogan is uh, human networking. You know, in Thai, it's clear Kai Shivit Setakit Thai. But having said that, um, we know that we have to, to adapt uh, and we are in the transformation. Um, you know, from the operation side, um, 
that we have to balance between the mail volume, the traditional postal service, and the parcel. Um, we still live on our legacy technology. So we we doing that as well that uh, you know um, the payment when when the e-commerce is growing, we are catching up with the private sector who has come into this uh, playing field. So we are under big transformation at this moment, and as the theme of this um, conference um, said, we are willing to collaborate, and I think that uh, our human network still um, bear some value and the trust of the public. Okay. Um, just, just to share with you, um, every year uh, we are under obligation to do the universal service obligation, which is um, to do the service to the deliver the mail and parcel to the last mile. Um, you know, no matter how far uh, that address is, and that's um, start with the loss of um, 1.5 billion baht per year. Um, we haven't been able to uh, increase on the um, stamp fee for the last 20 years. So that's uh, the obligation that Thailand Post need to do. Um, however, as, as I said, we are under transformation and um, we are focusing on the last mile, which is logistic part. So if we can um, leverage and, and materialize that um, last mile and become uh, one of the platform that can connect to um, the e-commerce and the payment, um, we think we, we should be able to compete in, in this sector. Thank you. Wow, that's uh, 126 year and uh, still under like the transformation. So, uh, like uh, I like to circling back to to uh, Kratin. Um So, um, KBDG Gasikon Business Technology Group is the technology and IT arm of uh, Gasikon Bank. So, um, our strategic imperative number one is basically go with the flow of commerce. So, wherever the commerce happen, we want to be part of that ecosystem. So that's why we um, we form a joint venture with Line, and then we invest that in Grab, and then we help power the um, PTT, which is our partner, and also Central JD as well. So basically, like wherever the commerce happen, we go with the flow of commerce, which is our first strategic imperative. And then, um, and then when we when we be part of the um, like commerce ecosystem, we are talking about not only online but also offline ecosystem as well because the um, many of the um, commerce still happen like offline. So we are talking about like harmonize. Want to we want to enable like the financial the movement of good service and also finance, which is money. So across the um, we call it harmonized retail. It's not like online to offline, but basically like um, experiences that is so seamlessly integrated across different ecosystem of our customer life. So that's our vision. So we do that by basically like um, we do like four things. Um, open, collaborate, co-create, and sharing. We open like um, our bank, we have like, um, we, we open like an API for that our partner can work. We have like payment and then like a lot of like um, API happen and capability of the bank. The um, KBDG, we have the um, like a research team. We develop deep, many deep tech technology within, um, within KBDG ourselves. We have like um, research scientists, machine learning scientists. We have like um, about 200 like um, researchers that are working on core capability that we open via API for our partners to connect. And we have like K-Catalyst, which is like the, um, like similar to like um, tech partnership arm um, for tech startup that can connect and plug and then like help us and then like um, so provide service for our customer. So that's where we, we say like, we call it like open. And then we collaborate with all these partners to co-create the financial solution for our customer, the end consumer, and then we share, you know, like um, basically like a um, business model sharing. So that's the um, how KBDG is positioned within the um, within the commerce and um, payment and ecosystem. And um, we are thinking about like um, K Bank is the regional bank 
So we have like K-China and um, we have the um, Indonesia and we are seeing like AEC as one. So um, we are going to facilitate the movement of goods, services and also money like um, across China and AEC. That's the, um, our vision and strategic imperative. Thanks, Karting. Wow, that's a very good, uh, interesting uh, strategy. So we're going to dive deeper into the, the next question. Now I'll turn to you. Okay, um, one word of warning. I'll be uh, speaking at a much slower pace than P. Grating because I, I cannot quite keep up my brains. <laughs> so, um, so C Group is, um, is a company that operates three platforms. One is Garena, which is um, uh, games and esports in Southeast Asia and Taiwan, um, and also global game developers. Um, e commerce arm is called Shopee. It's uh, again uh, e commerce in Southeast Asia and Taiwan and also AdPay, which is a FinTech platform. So we have three platforms. And I think you know, when I look at the topics of today, um, the topic I believe is, sorry, uh, connecting digital payments and digital platforms. I think the key word in there is connecting. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that because connection is a two-way thing. We tend to talk about connection in one direction in the sense that you know, we need more efficient payment system, seamless payment system in order to facilitate um, use cases like e-commerce, like games, like ride hailing, and that's definitely right. But it's also true the other way around that in order to promote um, adoption of digital payments, you need to drive a strong digital use cases. You need a strong demand so that people want to adopt the digital payments. Because the analogy I tend to use is that payments is kind of like a bridge you know, you can make the bridge really easy to cross, make it really nice, but at the end of the day, you don't really cross the bridge if you don't like the destination. So you have to make the destination really attractive. And how do we do that? We look at popular use cases around the world, and the main one seems to be games, e-commerce, ride hailing, traveling. So if you look at that, we have uh, two of, of those two or three or four main use cases in games and e-commerce. And what we're trying to do is to build synergies between the two, um, both on the use case, the games and e-commerce side, as well as the payment, which is the AppPay side. Garena and AppPay has always been together, and in recent years, we have also integrated AppPay into Shopee. That means that you can use AppPay wallet into to pay for Shopee, and Shopee can also drive the use case for AppPay, creating that synergies. And I think that synergies, that two-way connection is a key uh, strategy for, for us. Oh, okay, then, then, then I think yeah, I totally agree with the keyword connecting. So like we need to connecting more to make like the, uh, the, the commerce is uh, getting better. So I want to, to d dig deeper on what uh, Garting just said about uh, the partnership. Because uh, how do you see the trend of the, the partnership between the commercial bank and other like stakeholders, like startup, and also like uh, to building this very successful digital platform? So I think I think I, uh, like bank we we are focusing on our core competencies. There there's only so many things that we can do ourselves. Even though like um, bank is profitable, that kind of thing, but still like we cannot innovate like um, by ourselves alone. We are good at providing like um, the financial enabler, which is a key capability. For example, payment, lending, and um, a few other stuff. Authentication. That's the um, that's our core capability. So we need to um, to innovate through partnership. So that's why the um, partnership is key theme for for the bank um, this year. Like um, like um, we do like um, line um, grab. PDT and many others that we are going to to expand. So um, and then like the key theme is not only only like partner. We are thinking of like um, like I said like um, collaborate and also co-create. You know co-create the innovation together. That will be the key theme. You know like so that's like um, the both both of the um, our partner and the bank we co-create the solution for our customer in customer and then like um, it will be a deep partnership and also synergy for a few of our partners so i think that will be the key so that the bank i think many many people talk about like um, bank as a services or bank as a platform that kind of thing so that's how we see ourselves like um, in the future as well so that like um, we can go with the flow of commerce so wherever commerce happen we are there for our customer we are the uh, solution that um, 
that co-developed and co-created by our partner. So that's why the bank has provided the runway for the fintech startups. You know, we start with the K Catalyst, so that like it's the first interaction point, so that startup come and talk to us, and then we have Beacon Venture, so that you can do Series A and then post Series A investment. And we want like um, startup like um, one um, even bigger. Uh, check size, we have K-Vision, which invests like, um, at the check size of like 50 million US dollar, at, then that can solve like Series B and also Series C funding gap in Southeast Asia as well. So I think like um, we provide a whole runway for startup to grow together with us. And as you, wow, as this uh, very uh, expand scope from like the C state to Series A, B, C, right? What, what are the, the, um, the lesson learned that you'd be able to share? Um, actually, before I joined the bank, I come from the um, startup world. I myself is a VC. I run a VC fund that invests in close to 70 startups across Southeast Asia already, I think. The, um, what we learned is that, like, um, you know, you cannot use the, um, the bank operating model with startups. <laughs> You know, like um, basically, it's uh, you have to create like a safe playground. That's why we at KBDG we create the internal sandbox. You know, which is safe, secure. You know, and at the same time, it open for open con uh, collaboration with startup. So startup can do like um, can join with us and then like create like um, technology solution for our customer. You have to create like um, a playground that innovation can happen, and you have to use you have to to um, to to play with the speed of the startup, you know, you cannot be their burden, you know, like, because if you use, like, many of the corporate innovation and corporate partnership with startup fail because, like, basically, you use, like, um, your corporate mindset with the startup, and at the same time, startup also, like, don't understand why you have to go through this kind of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You have to create a safe uh, environment and a bridge between the two, between the startup world and also the, um, the, the, the bank, so that, like, um, both of us can, the, um, can really co-create safely and securely as well, so I think like um, you have to create like that kind of like sandbox uh, environment. Perfect, and then now that's a view from the commercial bank, how about the, the social platform, like um, C or like Line, and maybe start with uh, Sunny Tan first. Yeah, when I think, um, you know, we think about partnership, um, one of the words that really come to mind is um, being humble, and that means really to understand and really move away from this kind of one size fit all or you know who has the biggest data who has the biggest most advanced tech and it's not really about that it's really to put customer first at, right at the center mm -hmm. and ask what are the needs and how is that changing over time um just give you some example um on the e-commerce side for shopee you know we look at we have many many types of sellers and merchants mm -hmm. um in the early days we have a lot of the digital entrepreneurs so social sellers um, they're very uh, digital savvy, they know internet very well, and they want new ways to engage with customers, to build trust, to know them better. Um, so, you know, we introduced recently, like, the live stream uh, features, where um, the, the, the merchants, the sellers, can actually live stream, you know, sell their products. Uh, many of them are really good talk speakers as well, entertainer. So you sort of put together the social, the entertainment, and shopping all mesh into one. Um, and really interact, and also through that process, build trust with the consumers so they feel like, I know the sellers, so I'm willing to transact with this person. Um, when it's come to SME, brick and mortar SME, very different approach. Of course, they're not as digital savvy, so we have to do workshops. We have things like Shopee University, where we run offline workshops all over the countries, thousands of them in Thailand. If you look at a whole region, then tens of thousands. Um, we recently introduced Shopee Bootcamp, which is a three-month intensive course mm. um, in collaboration with the OSMAP, the SME promotion office here, um, to, to get entrepreneurs to do that. And moving to the, to the large, even large company, large retail company these days, sometimes they also want to collaborate with e-commerce platform because we realize that we have a lot to learn from each other. We have different traffic. You know, our, our, our traffic tend to be younger, more f female dominated. Um, they also want to share the data insights, and we allow a system like the open API so that if they have the digital backend, something they already developed over time, they don't have to recreate everything anew. They can just link it to Choppy, and, um, and, and that to create sort of this, you know, back to P, P point about co-creation, co-innovation in that front. Oh, wow, it seems like everyone like align on the co-creation and then try to see like you supporting seller quite a lot like building the whole community. How about you, uh, uh, Jinwoo? Uh, so uh, how, how line and doing that? Um, I prepared some slides. So can I show some slides? 
Um, as I said, it's so far. Oh, over there. <laughs> so, uh, Rabbit Line Pay is nothing but uh, value added uh, payment service within Line Messenger. So, basically, we are the service guy. So, basically, this is a new, um, um, not new, we launched it in October last year, and we got some good um, uh, feedback from the market. So this is our BTS service. So as of now in Bangkok, um, BTS takes up about 70% of the, it's not subway, it's the mass transit uh, traffic. So BTS, uh, um, from 35 station, um, BTS group has a plan to expand to 130 stations in the next two, three, four years. So this one, before that, it was 100%, not 100%, because uh, BTS used to have KBank EDC, but now it's gone. But so <laughs> right before we launched the service, it was 99% cash payment. So due to the MDR issue, BTS were not able to accept the credit card payment. And we came in. And this one, uh, within Line Messenger, uh, we added a new service, meaning that we already know that people don't want to download the new app. So these days, when you guys get a new phone, and normally people download only three to four applications. And later on, you think twice and three times before you download the app. So instead of a separate app, we decided to add a new feature, and this one, um, with the, on our main page, you can check the remaining pass. So this one you can buy just like e-commerce. You can buy the pass trip from starting from 15 trip, and we show the remaining uh, pass trip uh, within the phone. And very easy to make a payment. You can buy uh, the 15 trip, 25 trip, 35 or 50 trips. And uh, here we have the visa. Uh, and then we work for Visa and MasterCard and all the issuers a lot. And meaning that we have 40% traffic coming from all the credit card and debit card payment. So before that, it was only a plastic card, rabbit card, and people had to cash in the money. But we gave a lot more freedom. And we are connecting all the credit card and debit card stored in your wallet, physical wallet, into this mobile platform. And as you see, also we allow uh, a lot of banks and the card payment and also offline top up. Still, we allow the user to top up, to cash in the money uh, if they don't want to use mobile banking or card payment. And another one is the trip. Uh, some users are still, passengers who are wondering about the uh, trip, whether the money was correctly deducted or not. And we are providing all the information through Line Messenger. And the buy cup. Next one. Yep. <laughs> and this one, you also we give another freedom. You may switch different source of funds. If you want to use cash uh, from e-wallet, or if you want to use credit card or debit card, as I said, kiosk, and anytime you can switch around. And another one is security. Uh, even myself, uh, I, don't want, I didn't want to put too much money into the cash card. If I lose the card, there's no way I can get the money back. So this one, if you lose your rabbit card, then you can just remove and get a new one. Yeah, that's another one, security. And also the smart reminder, if you have uh, not enough remaining balance through Line Messenger. Actually, every single time you take BTS SkyTrain, we send out the reminder through Line Messenger. So this is how we can bridge between the users and our partner. And the buy, next one. And another one. So anybody came from Bangkok Bank? Tanakan Krungtap, United. So once again, um, uh, on this stage, I want to really appreciate all the support from Kun Tony. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope you guys know who's Kun Tony, right? So this one, um, we, we, this is our initial project. So after we got BTS service within Line Messenger, then we are connecting with BBL and banking. 
So that through BBL and banking, so you don't need to use Line Messenger if you don't want to use. If you want to use um, BBL and banking, or in the future, some other bank, uh, mobile banking, we are okay. We are perfectly okay. We are not forcing anybody to use only Revline Pay. And the bike up next one, yeah. And another one, um, together with PromPay, also we are on uh, BTS vending machine. So daily, about 20% of the ticket sales coming from the vending machine. And this one is we call single journey ticket. This one, you can make a payment with Revline Pay, the same method. And another one. And also nearby, uh, BTS station, there's a lot of food court and small SME merchant or big merchant. And we are getting, acquiring more and more merchant. So from the mass transit, we are expanding our user base, more usage case. And the next one is Starbucks. And this one is another one. Oh, okay, we can move on, no problem. Yeah. So this one, uh, one last example. Um, in Japan, two, three months ago, we launched it. We call it My Card. So this one is also embedded within Line Messenger. So this one is not uh, Revit Line Pay e-wallet. This one is Starbucks balance. So instead of using plastic card, you can just create virtual card within Line Messenger and top up the money. So still we allow cash payment, but if you have, uh, if you do not have remaining balance, you can put a press uh, Line Pay button and top up. And also we are developing online ordering. So even before you go to the branch, you can order Starbucks. And yesterday we launched Starbucks Taiwan and we got a really good feedback. So actually I had a meeting with Starbucks Thailand today and came to BOT. So hopefully in the near future, um, I hope we can use Line Pay, Rebel Line Pay as Starbucks Thailand. So that's about it. So this is how we try to promote a mobile payment in Thailand. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, I uh, am also like Line Pay a bit uh, card uh, in uh, my uh, phone as well. But uh, I think uh, one of the question that uh, Thai people would ask because I have like everyone here maybe have the same pain because the two system is not connecting between like the BTS and MRT, right? What is your what is your plan on that? <laughs> um. <laughs> I think I've been nice to you. How come? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's, that's kind of a, <laughs> So that's uh, that's uh, something that I I think like uh, it's not because of uh, like line right, but yeah. I think that's how like maybe you'll be the the first uh, platform that yeah. get two platform unite together. So we are open for the partnership with MIT. Basically, MIT. So this one is common ticketing issue. And also, it's quite complicated. So I don't. I think <laughs> we have no enough time. Mind me well, Mind me well. That that's yeah. That's that's what um, like I want to ask about um, the the the, um, the experience and yeah, the learning, right? But yeah, we maybe you can jump to Chris because he's been waiting for so long. So Chris, so um, uh, uh, based, uh, as you are the international payment technology partner, yeah, you want to bridge this gap. Uh, how how you plan to bridge the gap between the online and offline? and promoting the, the commerce? Yes, the online offline question. Um, look, you know what's funny about this question? Like, the only people that really ask it are like, us, like the payment people, and like the people in this room. Because most consumers, they don't do that at all. Um, you know, like, they just don't. They just want to get the stuff that they need. They, um, I mean, I can't imagine like a household where someone would like yell down the hall, like, you know, hey, hey family, I'm just about to make an online payment. And no applause comes from that. But if someone shouted down the hall, hey, family, I, I just booked our vacation to Bali, well, someone's going to say something. Because um, the, the line's not there um, in that sense. So if that's, if, if we're moving beyond that, you know, we'll, that's our job to worry about online and offline and how that all works. If that's not it, you know, what do, what do we need to worry about? So, you know, it's probably better use of our time to, to think about what the consumer really wants to do and then where we find them. Because the, in particular, where we find them uh, really matters when it, we talk about digital payments and platforms. So, first of all, one, what people want to do, um, actually, can I, if you're a payment professional, like this is your thing, 
Can I see a show of hands like you're somewhere in the, put them up. If you work in payments, okay, cool. So some people, but not enough. So here's your little payments lesson. So if you're going to do payments right <laughs> and, or it's your vocational calling, you have to think about all the use cases left, right, and up, and down. And when I mean like left, right, up, and down, I mean you have to worry about use cases of extremely high value. That's actually a problem in payments, buying vacations, TVs, a car payment, um, a rent payment. Right? That, that's a whole different category. You have to, then you have to go low. Right? Transit. Um, if you're in a video game, uh, buying armor you know, might be you know, 25 cents. Right? That's super cheap. So you worry of high or low. And then you got to go left and right. So that means everywhere that people want to buy, restaurants, convenience stores, um, at the table in a restaurant, online, offline, um, so it goes, and then eventually there's even the case like you know you paying me. That's peer to peer, right? That, so that's your little use case. And, and most of the time we sort of optimize for the middle. It's like a, like a three thousand bot transaction, you know. That, um, but you got to hit all the use cases if you're really going to hit maximum utility. Okay, so that's what we worry about. That's the what people want to do. Then um, you got to find out where people want to do it, and that's where um, you know as, as we talk about line pay. Um, if Consumers are going to go there. Well, we have to help take them there. And I, and I know when you guys look at like the business of payments, you probably don't want to integrate with everyone, every bank and institution out there. That's hard. So our job is to make sure that people can put their credentials into platforms where um, people want to spend. So um, we like for, so to do that, you know, we make um, investments, partnerships, commercial deals. And, and we do the best we can to help. So, in fact, with, with Line, um, we have a, an arrangement, right, where uh, there's 187 million Line accounts um, globally, and um, those Line Pay users can use Line Pay at any of the uh, 54 million Visa merchants. That's pretty good. Um, yesterday, you know, we made uh, a, a minority investment in Gojek, um, and that's because Gojek is doing some, you know, hometown hero in Indonesia. And, and doing some really good things when it comes to the unbanked and the underbanked. And um, you know, for us, that helps with reach, but it also helps impact a lot of people. So we're happy to help on that. Um, and that's where people are putting their eyes and their thumbs and, and, and transacting. Um, in the gaming world, um, uh, we have an arrangement with a, another a, a gaming company. That, it's a product called RazorPay, and same thing. They'll be able to use that online. It's a whole lifestyle, that, that gaming lifestyle um, that we know. It, 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 that's who people are, that's where they want to be, and, and with the right arrangements, we can help them use the same pay that they use online anywhere that uh, Visa is accepted. So that's how we're trying to reach and, and cover the gap between the platform and, um, and what people are doing. And it's really about putting a secure credential into those platforms um, that can be retrieved and then sort of used on command. Perfect, and then I want to come back to Kunratapol again. Yeah, regarding the, um, uh, how, how logistic provider uh, be able to help like promoting digital payment yeah, or how like the, um, Thailand Post plan to corroborate with more partners in the near future as you are under transformation right now? Right, what, what I can think of right now is that um, we have a lot of uh, data as asset, but it hasn't really been um, monetized or do per se big data. Uh, we have a database of 18 million households uh, that um, sit in our um, own backyard. And we are actually collaborate with the Bank of Thailand to um, do big data on e-commerce, you know, because we, we collect the data and try to help promote uh, our own SME to uh, export, or even, you know, uh, we, we have data of the um, imp import uh, goods from uh, other countries. Um, so that's an underway that we think those are the, the uh, key area that we are playing. We also collaborating with um, the Latka Bank and Carnegie Mellon uh, on uh, trying to do the route optimization for our fleet network. So all, I think those are the, the examples that we are 
uh, striving and we, we, you know, we not uh, sit still and just uh, doing the same old game in, in logistics. Um, however, I, I would like to share one true story that uh, just happened recently. Um, because uh, this case happened in suburb Bangkok that uh, an emergency ambulance was called in to, uh, to help uh, a sick, per sick person and um, the ambulance um, got there but couldn't find the house. Uh, fortunately, there's a male man, you know, in that area passed by. So the driver of ambulance asked our mailman, just take me to, to that house. And that's how that uh, person has been saved. So um, you have to, you know, to uh, sort of uh, uh, make this balance between digital and, and analog, as they say. So um, this is something that we, we, we're working on, you know, and I, I hope that we still um, have trust by the, um, you know, Thai people. Uh, we still um, have a lot of talent in our uh, own company. What we lack is uh, technology. And that's, we, we have to admit we are uh, quite behind on technology. And again, you know, uh, being a state and price, one of the advantages is that um, other state and price, for example, PTT or R, um, on the um, same playing field, they prefer to partner with us on, on some collaboration that, you know, uh, just open new uh, pick up, drop off uh, in Amazon or in PTT station. So um, that's, you know, that's the transformation that's been going on. Well, thank you so much. I think that, um, that's the power of the human network that uh, Thailand Port has. And um, just uh, because we're talking a lot about opportunity, open, uh, collaborate, innovate, and then building the whole ecosystem. Now I want to switch gear to, uh, to talking a little bit about the, the challenge. So uh, in, in your area, like what are the biggest challenge that you think if you be able to overcome that, and then the, the, the commerce gonna, gonna grow like 10x. Yeah, so we, maybe we start from uh, Thonson first. Maybe uh, I have a slide. Can you help put up one slide? Yeah, that's it. And let me see if this works. Um, so the question is uh, challenge. challenge. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, no, uh, I, I think one of the key challenge um, is, is the issue of uh, digital skills, actually. And it's about, you know, you have, I think, as a uh, uh, our speaker just talked about the linking the analog to the digital world. Very, very important and a human factor in that. I touched briefly about SMEs and education they need. Um, but we also done a recent study that I wanna, I wanna show here today where we're trying to see you know, what happens when you successfully get people to go online and how, how is that um, empower them as an entrepreneur in our, our platform. So this is a study where um, we did a survey about 7,000 merchants on uh, Shopee just in Thailand alone. Um, and we're trying to understand, and we asked them a question like, like where are they selling their products to, which region, um, before and after. And they can choose eight regions. It could be their own province, mm. Bangkok, capital region, north, south, uh, and what have you. Um, and and um, we have a, this is a map of the data. This is before adopting e-commerce. I'm just showing the north and the northeast for now. Um, you can see that, yeah, a lot, there's a lot of like really big dots of circles, right? Which means a lot of a transaction is happening within their own province. They are somewhat constrained by their geography. Um, there's some lines going out, but it's still pretty pale. Now watch the after adoption it become much, much, much thicker because now you're no longer bounded by your geography. Your market is nationwide. You can sell it to anywhere you want. Your products become known. You get a market discovery, business discovery that you don't know before. The customers also know your products and they're able to order from, from that. 
Um, and when you look at that nationwide, that's what it looks like. And we found that basically the trade connections that you see, um, the starting point was about 4,500 connection points. Um, it became 9,000 connection points, roughly doubled. And the, if you look at the merchants, about half of the merchants um, before adopting e-commerce never sell to outside their region before. So if they're from Chiang Mai, they only sell to the north at, at most. After adopting e-commerce, 85% sell outside their own region. And that's, you know, see how the digital commerce can empower them uh, increasing their reach. And what we found actually most interesting about this is the following. Then that, that's the reason why I show you north and northeast. These are the two regions which saw the biggest increase in trade connections at, after adopting e-commerce. And you know what? There are also the two regions which reported the income, household income increase, and there are also the two regions with lowest income per capita in Thailand. So it leads to the possibility that if you use um, technology right, you get them to adopt e-commerce and uh, other digital technologies, you can make more inclusive economy. You can reduce inequality using these tools. And uh, I'm, I'm an economist by training, so that's the topic I'm really, really passionate and very interested in. Wow, that's an amazing story. How about like we want to turn to Kratin once again? Yeah, about the challenge that you see, and then yeah, well, how do you want to cope with it? Um, I I think like for me, it's um, like providing financial solution for the um, SME and also the um, the emerging like um, I call it trade entrepreneurs. You know, so um, right now we have like um, content creator, we have like um, you know like um, authors, like um, we have like small. Even like I'm um, not even like um, SME, you know, it's like a um, nano entrepreneur, something like that. Probably one or two people that get started, and um, we have like um, a new kind of entrepreneur, like um, you know, like people that facilitate the commerce as well, like um, like drivers that kind of thing, you know. So we want to provide financial solution, which in the past it uh, based on the credit model, it it these people are excluded from getting access to like credit and also financial product. So we want to provide like um, information based lending and information based um, financial product so that like we can include and provide equal opportunity for everyone, you know, so that they can get started on their business and follow their vision. And at the same time, so, like um, we provide a financial runway for these people and become a partner for these people when as they grow up as well. If you can solve the um, financial inclusion, if you can include all these people while providing the right credit model based on the um, alternative data. For example, like um, drivers of um, our partner Grab and, um, and also small, small like um, entrepreneur that want to get started. All these like online entrepreneur, one or two people, or gig economies, you know, that um, that's also support this kind of ecosystem and include everyone, you know, like um, the whole country win, not only like all these people, because when we include them into the financial, the formal financial uh, ecosystem and also the commerce ecosystem, it help provide like um, tax, like um, revenue for the country as well. So, so that's how we see ourselves providing the lifeblood and include everyone and don't leave everyone behind by using technology. Oh, that's incredible. Like, uh, how about you, uh, Mr. Atapol? The most challenging. Yeah, challenging. Um, I think for our. Um, Thailand Post will be create an innovation engine um, from our own legacy, you know, um, being um, 126 years old, uh, state enterprise, and 30,000 workforce, um, there's a lot of things that need to change. Um, and to create an innovation mindset within our organization is, is very challenging. Um, well, let, let me share with you my, my business experience. Uh, when I did start a, a joint venture e-commerce company in 2000, we um, sort of tried to um, create this innovation, but based on principle, on, on fundamental that we can um, uh, adhere with and follow. That is, um, I think, analogy to this digital platform uh, we call back then intelligent supply chains. That 
when you need to create intelligent supply chain, uh, it's a combination of information flow, of money flow, and business process and product flow. We, so far, I think we have uh, seen um, the information flow in terms of uh, e-commerce, you know, from um, uh, upstream to downstream. We seen, uh, we've seen the integration of, of payment, you know, the supply chain finance. So the money flow is there, part of the uh, process. The challenging things is how can you integrate the delivery into this platform and to really build an ecosystem where you know you don't you don't again don't leave any activities behind. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Thailand Post still has an edge in in you know completing that. We can be a good partner to uh, to financial platform and you know to other digital platform. Thank you. And then, uh, like, just uh, for back to Jin Lee once again. Yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> every day we are facing a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges. And it keep on changing. Uh, the challenges we are facing yesterday and today uh, and maybe tomorrow, always not the same. My mom can. But <laughs> today, but we always like uh, focus on the problem that we have today, every day. So today my problem is Visa Thailand. <laughs> Visa Thailand, so Kun Mike is over there. Kun Mike is the country manager for Visa Thailand, as you may know. He has not been replying to my email <laughs> for so long. And he was in <laughs> one overseas business trip. I was chasing him over and over again. I can even show you my line message. <laughs> no reply at all. So I was forcing him to attend this panel discussion so that I can grab him right after this panel discussion. Why am I doing this? I want to clear a very innovative commercial condition with Kun Mike so that we can provide better payment service for Kuntai users. And that's the problem uh, that I'm having now. And I, for sure, I will be clearing it. And please help me after the stage. And please come together and then let's force Kun Mike to accept my <laughs> innovative request. That's about it. Yeah. OK, Dai <laughs> Mike. Thanks a lot, Jin Ru. So I, uh, I'll help you by calling uh, P Mike after this. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Turn to you. Uh, hold on a second here. I just have to check with Kun Mike. <laughs> Come on, Kun Mike. Do you want to say something? Just say, I'll call you. We will we'll talk. <laughs> that, I think that's a promise. Okay. No oh boy. Um, hey, can you put up um, Santi's slide one more time? It was the last slide that had like sort of the heat map of. I think that's going to cost you something. Oh gosh, <laughs> you might call him too. Micro payments. <laughs> yeah, go to, go to the end there, because the question was about challenges. Uh, I'll click all the way through. So um, let's look at this from the two parties that are in here. Um, in, that's actually behind this picture. There's a buyer and there's a seller. Okay. So um, the the problem of e-commerce really hasn't changed in a lot of ways over the last gosh 15 plus years that we've been doing it. If you're a SME and you're trying to sell, the, the problem is, is it's hard. It's really hard to sell anything, right? You have to have something, a good product. You have to put it somewhere for distribution. You have to get customers. If you're an e-com professional, you have to get them to put it in the cart and you have to drive conversion. Um, and that's the most important metric that an e-com merchant looks like, conversion, conversion to sale, how many went through. The last thing an e-com merchant wants is someone to sort of abandon the cart, right? Like they put it in the cart and they can't make a payment. And so what happens, and this is where, you know, it's important as we collaborate and we want to build just to make sure people get paid. And so uh, to, for what it's worth, good brands, good strong brands that people recognize 
could be the line pay button, could be a, global, um, a globally recognized network. When that button goes on there, um, that small merchant becomes a global merchant, and that's important. Uh, I wish we actually had this picture that was sort of cross-border because that's the other side of the, the challenge. If I'm purchasing from, um, I live in Singapore, if I'm purchasing from a, a merchant in Thailand, um, I have a trust issue, right? I, oh gosh, if I, when the moment I, I want this, but when I, if it doesn't come, what do I do? And so we have to deal with those trust issues so that um, the merchant gets paid and the consumer gets what they want and they don't get ripped off. And, and that's the role of collaboration, standards, chargeback pr procedures, all that stuff that the payment ecosystem has to stand in for. And when that do is done right, th like this picture looks extraordinary. Um, it's, it's a rainbow, it's, it's pretty cool. And um, so the, we have more work to do to really make commerce take off across Thailand. Perfect, and then uh, I think that this come to the last uh, like question for everyone to wrap it off. Yeah, so if you have like the, the, key, uh, the key takeaway and then if you have the magic wand yeah, to do one thing, yeah, I give you 30 second ish like elevator pitch, yeah, if you are like the, what you want to, to achieve. Yeah, so uh, starting from Chris first. Okay, count on. Uh, stop me if you heard this one before, but um, open, interoperable standards, those are critical success factors, right? You heard that one before. Um, secondly, in my opinion, um, a critical success factor is reliable economics in a payment ecosystem. For some reason, there's some thought that the price of payments is zero, it's not, there's risk involved, and so we have to account for that, and that really builds ecosystems. And lastly, um, the customer experience should always prevail. We listen to them, we should build um, for what they want, and, um, and if we do that, um, we will succeed. Jin Wu, please. Um, I already told you what I need to get it done <laughs> within today. I need to get the deal done with Kun Mike. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, okay, okay. I think you get this after that. <laughs> now I'll turn to P. Rashevo. The, the organizer has asked me to, to um, uh, give out a quote, and I think uh, I just say it now that uh, I li really like this one, because uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And Thailand Post want to, you know, <laughs> go together with, with all of you guys. Um, I, I, I think, I think like, um, ba basically like every, everything that, everything that we talk can happen if we really solve like, um, probably not related to finance, you know, but basically related to education, you know, if we change the, um, education in Thailand and solve the, um, the constraint and limited supply of top tech talent into the country, you can basically like, you can solve, you can give me like a hundred thousand like, um, tech talent in Thailand, I can find a job for them and we, we can more than double the GDP of Thailand, definitely. Just give me 100,000 top tech talent and we'll hire every single one of them. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, I just published a book this year. Um, oh, duration, <laughs> <Future ration. laughs> So first, please uh, buy. Uh, I don't mind which you know, system of payment you use, but uh, no, but uh, on, on a more serious note, the book is about pre preparing for the future economy, mm. right? And I think we touch on that issue. Peter Ting talked about education. One of the things we're very passionate about is investing, developing digital skills in the region. And by digital mm -hmm. skills, I don't mean skills to use digital stuff only or just programming, but as skills that are needed for the digital age. It could be critical thinking, creativity, languages, all these things. Uh, in fact, um, C Group recently launched uh, what we call 10 in 10 because we just a uh, 10 year anniversary. Mm. So we uh, announced that over the next 10 years, we want to build, um, train, educate 10 million people in this region um, to prepare them for the future. And that will entail things like um, you know, scholarships, internships to invest in the uh, future generations, teach them how to become game developers, designers, e-sport casters, new jobs, new industry. Um, it's also about the current generations, train them to use e-commerce and the digital uh, tools of today to empower them. And also uh, trying to create a link um, between the part, different parts of ecosystem like academics, policymakers, and the industry. So that's 10 in 10 is you know, something that we 
um, really passionate about. And, uh, and of course, um, the, the book is, uh, is a good one too. If, uh, it's called Futuration, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Iteration. Okay. All right. So, wow. Yeah. I think I think we see uh, the, the the very common theme here. Yeah. Be, because at the end, we want to drive all the like commerce to grow, right? But before you drive the commerce to grow, everyone just say like uh, like Chris mentioned about like open, in a way, corroborate security. So uh, and then like uh, many speaker talking about the people side of it. So I think the most important thing is that we don't think about how to grow the commerce. But coming back to maybe some more basic things like people, like people said, so they said now, stop, stop now, right? It's, it's, it's time is over, it's like 20 seconds left. So, but basically at the end, it's all about the people. When you think about the people first, put the people, put customer first. Maybe that's, uh, that's the easiest way to start off and then grow the economy together. All right, I want to thank all the panelists today. Please give the big hand of applause. Thank you.